Hey everyone, I'm Seth from Myriad Misadventures, and today I'm going to talk about Bantayan Island, which was the second half of our trip to the Philippines. If you watched the last video about Cebu City, you know that I did not do so good planning that half of the trip. Not so good here being a euphemism for absolutely terrible. But luckily, I did a much better job planning the second half of the trip. Bantayan Island is a small island off the northwest coast of Cebu Island. It's bigger than Pancor Island, where we went in Malaysia, uh, so there's a little more amenities than Pancor had, but it was still small enough to be nice and relaxing. The main reason that planning went a little better for Bantayan Island than for Cebu City was we had budgeted much more time on the island. We really only had one full day on Cebu, but we had three full days on Bantayan. We went back to Cebu the day of the flight, but even if we had had to go back the day before, we still would have had two full days. To get to Bantayan Island, we took the bus from the Cebu North Bus Terminal to Hagnaya Port, and then from Hagnaya Port, we took a ferry to Santa Fe on Bantayan Island. Once we got there, we got picked up by someone from the hotel who brought us to the hotel. We dropped our stuff and then we settled in. We don't usually do much on the day that we arrive in a new place. Uh, we usually take it kind of slow, and we did the same thing when we got to Buntine Island. After dropping our stuff at the hotel, we went and poked around a nearby beach and then wandered into Santa Fe for dinner. While we were eating dinner, another diner told us about Fiesta, which is a series of parties that take place around the island. That night's fiesta was near us, so we decided to check it out after dinner. It turned out to be pretty cool. There were plenty of people, snacks, drinks, we got some smoothies, and lots of music. We enjoyed it for a little while, but we ended up heading home not too late because we didn't want to lose too much of the next morning. So on our first full day at the island, we got a tour of the southern part of the island from the hotel. Uh, it was just us, not a big tour group, so there was the driver who had a motorbike, and then like a two or four person trailer thing connected to the motorbike. Even though it was just the two of us and not a big tour group, there was still a more or less set group of places, but we could ask or request things, which you probably wouldn't be able to get away with in a bigger group. The first stop was Og Tong Cave, which looked like a cave with like a pool in it, and I was pretty excited. I thought that sounded pretty cool, but it was kind of a letdown, honestly. I was expecting just a cave somewhere with a pool in it, but it turns out that it's on the grounds of a hotel. So to go into the cave, you have to pay to get into the hotel, unless you're staying there already. And then the cave was just, it seemed too kept up, I guess, which is a strange thing to complain about, but I'd expected it to be cavier. And I guess technically it was a cave, it was a big hole in the ground with water in it, but I'd expected something a little more natural. I don't know if it was man-made or not, but since it was well-maintained, it seemed that way. The swimming was good, but it was not really what I'd expected. But since you get into the hotel, you can wander around all their grounds after you go to the cave. You can sit by the ocean, enjoy the sun. So there's a little more to do there than just the cave if you do go. Since we were relatively underwhelmed, we didn't stay too long and left to go to the next spot. But since I can't do anything without messing up something, it was then that I realized I did not bring my floaty stick for the action camera. So we made a detour back to the hotel to get the floaty stick, and then we went to our second location, which was the Diving Cliff. With a name like Diving Cliff, I had expected to be able to jump, but just like with the Og Tong Cave, I was let down. The Diving Cliff was a cliff or a bluff over the ocean. I wasn't super high or anything, but it was out over the ocean. There was some remains of old buildings around and some stairs that looked like they went down into the ocean. So maybe you can jump sometimes, but when we were there, you could not. The surf was far too strong. You would have gotten smashed into the wall. So ultimately, I'm not sure if it was just poorly named or if it's named that way to try to entice people to go on the tour or if we were just there at a bad time. But at the end of the day, I was let down because I wanted to jump and I couldn't jump. The third stop, however, made up for the sort of lackluster first two. After the diving cliff, we went to the Oboab Mangrove Garden. The Oboab Mangrove Garden is a protected nature spot that encompasses the mangrove swamp and the coast around the mangrove swamp. When you get in, you get a guide who shows you around, and you can walk through the mangrove swamp on the walkway. You get to look at the mangrove gardens, all those big mangrove roots. You can see the sea. You get to feed some fish, 
And while you're walking through, you get to be on the lookout for animals like the aforementioned fish, birds, crabs, other things that would live next to the ocean. One really cool thing we saw was as we were leaving, the beach right at the entrance had a whole bunch of fiddler crabs, I think. The ones with the one tiny claw and the one huge claw. They were, they were small, but there was a whole bunch of them just walking down the beach. It was really cool to see. The fourth and final stop was a lagoon. It just said lagoon on the page. It was north of the ferry terminal in Santa Fe, so a little farther away from the other three things, which were south, southwest a little bit. It was a little secluded, so it was pretty quiet and peaceful, and we spent most of the time wading around in the shallows looking at starfish. We found some really small ones. We found some ones with like really long spindly arms. We found some big fat ones. All sorts of cool starfish in the area. The lagoon was the last stop, so after we finished there, we got dropped off at the beach near Kota Beach Resort in the southeast of Buntine Island. I don't know if the beach is called Kota Beach after the resort or if it's part of Sugar Beach, which is a, the beach a little farther west. I'm not sure, but that's the beach we got dropped off at. It was probably late afternoon, early evening at this point, and we just spent the rest of the afternoon slash early evening relaxing at the resort and poking around the beach. I learned you have to be careful on the beach. We were there during low tide and the beach seems nice, but if you go out a little too far, the sand gives away to rocks or coral or something and it really hurts your feet. Maybe it's not a problem during high tide, I'm not sure, but when we were there later in the day during low tide, you hit the rocks before the water got too deep. So if you're there, make sure you have some kind of water shoes. So we wrapped up that day at Kota Beach Resort and the beach next to it. Then we went to dinner and then we went back to the hotel because we didn't want to get a late start to the next day, which is something we do a lot. We plan a whole bunch of stuff and then we sleep too late and we have to shorten it or cut stuff out. So we were really trying those first couple days on Bantayan to make sure we didn't stay out too late. Second day was great too. We got a boat to take us to Virgin Island, which is a small island east of Bontayan Island. The boat was also supposed to stop at another island on the way called Hilantagan Island or something like that, but they told us the weather wasn't good, so we just went straight to Virgin Island. We were told Virgin Island used to have nothing on it, hence the name, but now it has a couple things. There's a restaurant, some stores, so you can get food, something, drink, some more sunscreen, things like that that you might need while you're there. Even though there's some stuff on it now, there still weren't that many people. There were a handful of other people other than us, but it was still very quiet. Not too overrun, nothing like that. The main side of the island has plenty of beaches and we spent a lot of the morning snorkeling and looking at fish. There's lots of fish right up close to the beach, so you can go out very close to the island still and see plenty of fish. They also built some cement covered building things a little ways out so that if you're out snorkeling, is something that you can hop onto if you get tired without having to go all the way back to the beach. One side of the island also has a jumping platform. You can jump right into the sea, so I finally got to jump. It wasn't too high, so it's not too crazy. The ocean below it isn't too bad, so you can swim over to the ladder out pretty easily. We went over there to jump a bunch of times, and then we went back to the main side of the island to snorkel some more and look at the fish. This time we'd saved some bread to try to feed the fish to get them to come swim around us. It worked great. You drop some bread in the water, the fish just come right up to you. We spent about six hours on Virgin Island, then around four we headed back to Buntine Island. We swung by the hotel real quick to change and catch our breath, then went out to dinner and called it a night. After our tour on the first day and our boat trip on the second day, we decided to take the third day a little bit slower. We slept in a little, we had a nice long relaxing breakfast, and then we went to a butterfly garden. I think it was actually a cafe, you could get food and coffee and stuff there, but we went to see the butterflies. If you go to see the butterflies, they show you how they raise them, you can see the caterpillars at different stages, then you go into the garden, if you get lucky they might let you release some butterflies, and then you can just wander around the garden watching all of the butterflies fly around, drink nectar, land on flowers. If you get lucky, land on you. Maybe the perfect relaxing activity. After the butterfly garden, we spent pretty much the whole rest of the day at the beach. I think it was Sugar Beach, which was not too far from our hotel. We went swimming a bit, enjoyed the sun, walked around in the shallows, looked for crabs. We found a couple of 
pretty big ones swimming around. They were pretty cool. And then we watched the sunset, which was incredible from the beach. After that, we went back to Santa Fe for dinner, and that was the end of our last day. Since we had a late flight back to Shenzhen, we decided not to go back to Cebu City for the last night, but we decided to stay in Buntai Island. Then, on the last day, we woke up early, caught the ferry back to Hagnaya Port, then took the bus back to Cebu. We killed a couple hours, and then we went back to the airport. And that was our Philippines trip. It started out a little when we were in Cebu, because we, I, really dropped the ball planning it. But after we got to Buntai Island, it picked up quite a bit. We had enough time, we got to see all the stuff we wanted, and we really got to enjoy the end of our trip. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe down below. And if you have ever been to Cebu, leave me a comment down below with your favorite beach, so that if I ever go back, I can check it out. The first step, step, He's not going anywhere. <laughs>